So just a quick video today about the idea of gratitude and resiliency and how those two things really go together when you're in the midst of incredible stress to, to really fortify you. You know, gratitude actually builds resiliency as you are going through stressful times. And the story that I'm going to share is one that I don't talk about very often. I talked about it to my friends at the time. And when this idea of gratitude comes up in really stressful times, sometimes you think, well, I don't have anything to be grateful for. Like, how can I be grateful right now when I've got all of this going on? And the story that always you know, makes me laugh about myself, like how I dealt with this myself, you know, even more so than my divorce, my situation with my son, when he was first diagnosed with Duchenne muscular dystrophy back in 2008, that is the most stressful thing that I've ever been through as an individual. And it was like, there were well, there was three years where I couldn't even talk about it, like spit out those words without crying. So I knew that it was a journey of healing that I was on when I first told somebody, oh, you know, my son actually has Duchenne muscular dystrophy and I could do it without crying. So there's that. But what I did, you know, during those three years up to that point, um, when things were really overwhelming and there was doctors and physical therapy appointments and just like one thing after the next, after the next was I actually would try to snap myself um, into a better mind frame by reading the obituaries. It was so long ago, we actually used to get like a newspaper, right? So I would like open it up and I would start my day by reading the obituaries and all of these um stories or some, you know, some of them are very sad and you look at the ages of the people. And so I would like consciously say to myself, well, you know, as hard as things feel right now, I'm still here and we're still here and things aren't as bad as they are for these people. Right. Like, and it's so twisted and dark, but it worked for me. And it really actually made me feel better. The other thing that I did was when I was taking my son on all these appointments, it was really sad. I, hopefully most of you have not spent any significant time in a children's hospital, but when you go in there, I mean, in the vast majority of cases I, I felt were worse than my situation. Right. And I would walk in there with my son and dragging my other two kids and, and um, think, Oh my God, like, all of these people are suffering more than I am in this moment. And those lessons then really did absolutely fortify me when I was worried about my divorce, right? Because then, you know, I knew I had been through the most stressful time. I knew I had the, um, you know, self-confidence and the resiliency to figure out the situation that was in front of me when I went to get divorced six years later or so. And that is really true. Like this self-confidence that you just have a belief in yourself. You know that you can figure this out, that if you do it with as much um, grace and compassion as you can, you're not going to subject yourself to a toxic process that you'll really literally be able to evolve your relationship into something else. And within the divorce world, the gratitude really starts right there. Like, Hey, I'm really grateful that I've figured out a way to do this without subjecting myself to further trauma. I'm really grateful that my kids aren't suffering or we're minimizing the suffering on everybody. And when you're working with your spouse and you see that those things happening and often I'll say to people, you know, you guys might not have agreed to anything for the last five years, but you have a really, really important agreement now that you're going to move forward this way, as opposed to subjecting yourself to something toxic and destructive. And there's actually some camaraderie that gets built from that decision feels really good. And, you know, we don't know what the future looks like, but we know that we are going to be grateful that we're not 
going down a more toxic road. And then when you wake up, just being grateful or feeling appreciation for the littlest things, like it's quiet in your house and no one's interrupting you when you're having coffee. If you really try to soak up that feel good appreciation during those small moments, it it's literally fortifying you to deal with the stressful things in a less reactive way. So instead of like waking up grouchy and then, you know, I've said this many times to my own kids, like I just can't handle one more thing today. But if you wake up grouchy, you get to that, I just can't handle it place way faster than if you start off your day trying to consciously focus on gratitude and appreciation. And that's, you know, saying it's almost the holidays, like count your blessings, no matter how small. And that's why I sort of felt like when my son was diagnosed, like how low does the bar have to be set, right? I set it pretty low. Like I was actually still not dead. That's how low the bar was. But that actually is a starting point, right? Like you got to start somewhere, but you just you know, take that story as, um, you know, just a lesson that it doesn't matter how low you start. It's the fact that you start that is important and that momentum will grow. So I hope you don't think I'm totally crazy. And, um, you know, I know the idea of gratitude in the midst of a divorce is not something that people talk about, that that is on purpose, part of the big difference between family transitions and you trying to create a smooth transition for your family. It's very different than a traditional divorce process. And one of the ways it's very different is because we are consciously focusing on gratitude and how that is gonna help you get through the process and really feel stronger and more resilient when it's over. So hope that helps.